Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this few minutes Bible study. And I pray you get a blessing out of it. And I'm going to be, uh, we're going to be uh, looking at the fourth chapter of Second Timothy, King James Version Bible. And I love this old book. I love the, this word. And Jesus Christ is the living word. As you've heard me say many times. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father. Again we thank you Lord for this opportunity. To come to you in just a few minutes Lord. And get into your word. And try to help someone else along the way. And Lord, I pray you open our hearts and our minds and anoint us for your great anointing that we may be able to understand what you're telling us and what you're telling one, you're telling all. And Lord, I pray it draws us all closer to you and gives us a greater desire to follow you and listen to your word and be a disciple that you are pleased with and to be a witness that will please you because lord we're here to please you and not please man and lord if we please you i know everything will be fine these things we ask in the lovely name of jesus christ our savior amen and thank you father one more time for your mercy Now listen how he begins this chapter. And if I have asked you before, if you have your Bible, read along with me in case I mispronounce a word. I do sometimes. If I catch myself, I'll go back and repronounce it. But I'm getting old and feeble now. And my days are drawing close. But as long as I live, I want to be doing something for my Savior. And to help lead someone else to Him. Verse number 1, chapter 4. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead? The quick are those that are living. At his appearing and his kingdom, the Lord's kingdom, not our kingdom, but the Lord's kingdom. Now listen to the instructions he gives. Verse 2 Preach the word. Be in instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. In other words, preach a word. Every time you have an opportunity, preach a word. Be instant. Have a message. Have the word that you can go to instantly and bring a message and deliver to the people and self-included the wonderful word of God. And how he's long-suffering. In other words, he forgives. He endures. A lot of times we want to rush him up. But we don't want to endure for a little while. That's what long suffering means. A long way down the road, we can still get blessed. Even after we are gone, our prayers can be answered. Someone we have prayed for can come to know Jesus as our personal Savior. 
but in the end we'll still receive a reward. Verse 3, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. We are in that day. We are in that time where the people want to accept it or not. We are still in that time. Jesus said, the Lord said it would be, and we're now in that time. They want to hear everything that will tickle and please and itch their ears, but not the truth, the word of God that will set us free. But after their own lust, Shall they heed to themselves teachers having itching ears? They want to please the crowd and not tell them the truth. They want to please the crowd so they can get more offerings in their offering plates where they can hear the money jingle and they know it's to come into their pocket. Verse 4, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall turn to fables, and turn their ear from the truth, and listen to stories of man, what he's come up with, to make it sound easier. That's where people, many people are at today. That's where many preachers are at today. They don't want to preach the truth. They want the each in years. Verse 5, But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Not judging, but how many are making full, F-U-L-L, proof of their ministry by preaching the truth, regardless who it hurts, if it slipped every toenail off in the congregation, are on the pastor's own feet. Let them slip, but let them draw closer to God, knowing God is the truth, and Jesus is the truth, and will always be true, and man can't change it and keep it from being true, but they can destroy them own selves by their false teaching. To please and tickle the ears of the listeners so they will come back and maybe offer more the next time. But now listen. We should be like this. And I always rejoice when I read the scriptures. The next few verses that I'm fixing to read in your hearing. And I pray you get the same as I get. You feel this spirit and hugging and touching your heart. And listen what he says. Verse 6. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. This is Apostle Paul teaching. He knew he was going to soon be offered. He knew his life was going to soon be taken. And they did take it. His head was chopped off at a chopping block. But he didn't fear it. He was ready to go. How ready are we to go on to be with the Lord? That we won't worry about preaching the truth. We will still preach the truth regardless how man takes it or the person takes it, even if they become our enemy for the truth, so be it. 
for God is much greater than all things on this earth. Now listen, in verse 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Verse 8, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. He was telling us today, not only was there a crown of righteousness laid up for him, but there's a crown of righteousness laid up for his children today that have been saved, that love him, that are doing everything they can to worship him and put him first and get the word out to those that are in need of a Savior and those that need to come back. Whether they want to hear it or not, let's tell them about Jesus and his great love and his, and his extended hand of mercy to those that will come to him and be saved. But let us tell them the truth about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we see here in his next few verses how many had left him. They had left Paul. He was the one to see somebody. How often have we longed to see somebody come by just for a few minutes to talk to us about the Lord and share his gospel with us. Verse 9, Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. Tyrannus, to Galatia, Titus, and D A L M A I T I A Demena. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. That all who left him went another way, except. Except Luke. Luke stayed with him. Was with him. But he asked him to bring Mark. And bring him with you. When you come to see me. How many today. Will go see. Their brothers and sisters. You can be out sick. And down. And they won't even call you to see how you are, or they won't even come by. If you got a phone, they won't call you. If they got brand new vehicles, they won't drive up to your door and ask them how you are if you need help of anything. So where's their love at? Their love is for the world and all they can gain. If they think you can't give them a bunch of money when they come to see you, they don't want no part of you. A part of us. Not, may not like that, but yet it's the truth. Verse 12. And Thysias have I said to Ephesus, the cloak that I left at Troas with Capris, when thou comest, bring them with thee, bring with thee, and the books, but especially the parchments, his writings, that he has left behind. Bring them with you. Because he wanted to look at them. He wanted to look through them again. Because his great love for his fellow man, his love for God, the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, 
because he wanted to see if he'd written something in there that shouldn't have been. Thank God for Brother Paul that would lay it on the line so plain, so clear that we all understand if we'd ask the Lord for understanding. It's wrote out so simple that a five-year-old, five-grader in school could understand it. And we make such a chore of understanding when we need to ask Him, ask the Lord for understanding, and He will give us understanding. 14. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. In other words, he wouldn't judge him. <coughs> but the Lord would reward him for his work. 15. Of whom be thou were also. Of word you watch out for him also. For he has greatly withstood our words. He didn't want them. He backed away from them. Therefore you watch him. You beware of him also. Because he'll do the same to you as he did to me. He, in other words, he will cause you harm as he call, caused me harm. And there are many out there today we have to beware of or they will cause us harm when they're pretending to do good. 16. At my first answer no man stood with me but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. He was still praying for them. Even though they had left him, they had forsook him and went the other way. Why? Because of the truth. He was telling them they didn't want to hear the truth. They didn't want to follow the gospel as he directed them and give them information to follow the gospel. 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. We are the Gentile race of people that he turned to. But when he saved us, we were no longer a Gentile, but we came, became a Jew through the spiritual birth that I have spoke on before. We were grafted in to that olive tree, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord stood with him. He will stand with us if we'll stand on the truth of the gospel and preach the gospel and teach the gospel as it's written and not our own words to please somebody else, to make them feel good, like if they're number one, they're all of it. Tell them the truth. If it convicts them, still tell them the truth. 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. He sealed it with amen. He said here that the Lord would deliver him unto the heavenly kingdom. Do we want to be delivered to the heavenly kingdom on that great day when he calls us away from this world? If we do, we better follow God's word as he has directed us and as he has asked us. The Lord asks us. He does not pour it down our throat and make us receive it. 
we receive it with an open heart because we want him. We want him to be our savior and we want to make it home when he calls us one day after a while. Now a lot of people would say that a woman can't work in a church. But now listen to what he says. Don't take my word for it, but take God's word. 19. Salute Priscilla and Aquila and the, and the household of one Cyprus. Erastus abode at Cor Corinth, but Trophimus have I left at Milton's sick. Do thy diligence to come before winter. Eubulus, greet thee, greeteth thee, and P U D E N and Pudens, and Linus, and Claudia, and all the brethren. The Lord Jesus Christ be with you, thy spirit. Grace be with you. Amen. They were women have been used all through the gospel. And it's time people understood that. Don't look down on a woman and say she cannot have a part in the ministry because woman plays a great part in a ministry. Our mother was a woman that taught us to love God, taught us about Jesus, and taught us we need to be needed to be saved before we ever were. So don't never tell let no one tell you that a woman don't have no place in the gospel. If we do, we'll be following the teachings of many men. And that teaching is not right. Our most kind gracious Heavenly Father. It's again we come to you, Lord, to thank you for this another opportunity. For these few minutes you give us once again. To get into your word just a few minutes. And Lord, I thank you for every word that you have given us. And Lord, I pray, Lord, they touch someone that's listening to this video tonight. Or at this hour. And Lord, I pray, Lord, if there's any sick, I pray, Lord, you heal, deliver, and set free. And Lord, I pray if there's any bound by drugs and alcohol, where it might be, you deliver them and set them free. And draw, send, send your drawing spirit to them and bid them to come to you once more. I, although I know you already have many of them. But I pray you send it once more. And I pray for those, Lord, that straight away that they will come back to you before it's too late. And I pray, O oh Lord, you give us all strong desire to follow you and follow your word. And make sure our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But, but Peter said for us to make her call in election, sure. And I know what we can know before we leave this world. And Lord, I pray tonight, one, this evening one more time, Lord. You bless every listener. And let them feel the joy, feel your Holy Spirit. Running up and down the avenues of their bloodstream and their soul. And let, let, Lord, let their, your Spirit pour from them. That whoever sitting nearby can feel the overflowing of that spirit and let them feel it too because Lord you are the greatest it's ever been and Lord we won't forget to give you the praise for it all in the lovely name and wonderful name of Jesus Christ our Savior we do humbly pray Amen and thank you Father one more time for your love and your mercy <laughs>